bam, and just like that, now you can send volatility notifications to your phone using the Polygon API and the Pushover App API in Python. Finance family, it's your other brother, Adam Gitbags, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create a volatility notification system. We're gonna be using two different APIs. It's gonna be three easy steps First, we're gonna to go to the polygon.io API to grab our data. Then we're gonna do volatility analysis. And last, we're going to go to the pushover API to send that push notification to your phone. So you can get a push notification just like this. First thing, we're gonna open up our trusty Google and then go ahead, Google search Polygon API. Here, we're gonna have Polygon. Of course, I cover everything in my Polygon videos. I'll link you up here. Next, Google search pushover app. Here, we have pushover.net. You can sign up and get your account going. I'll link a video right up here where I go over the basics of getting set up. First, we'll pop over to our script. We're gonna to wanna to make sure we pip install Polygon API client. So first thing, we're gonna import our modules. First, we've got pandas. Then we've got our Polygon imports from the documentation. We've got NumPy here. And then we've got our HTTP client and URL lib. That's gonna be useful for our pushover. And then what I'm doing here is I'm importing my pushover token and user, basically API keys. And then here I'm importing my Polygon API key. I'm importing all these from separate files, but you can paste them directly as strings in your script if you're not sharing your script. So here we can just assign our Polygon API key if we need to. So here I'm setting a variable to to three. This is how many stocks I want to have notifications for. So if you want to have more stocks for notifications, you can just change this. You'll see this in the data analysis later. Then next, I'm setting up this empty data frame where we're going to store our standard deviation data. Then here, if you've seen the Polygon videos, first thing we do is we create our client and we authenticate to the API with our API key. Now here is where we introduce our stock tickers list. So I've created for the purposes of this video, just a six ticker list. But if you've seen my other video, which I'll link here, on how to create a stock ticker list. You can have a list with way more stock tickers. Up next, very fun, we're gonna be requesting all of our stock data, and then we're gonna be doing the bulk of our data analysis. So for every stock ticker in our stock ticker list, we're going to do the following. First, we're gonna create a data request here using our daily data requests. I have a video on that showing you how to get daily data, hourly data, or minute data, whatever you need. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run some of this code and then I'm gonna make an individual data request so that we can kind of follow along and you can see what's happening in our script. So we've pulled our data down, it's living in this data request. And then here, this variable price data, we're creating a data frame from our response from our data request. So as you can see, we have our data frame of our price data and then we're gonna take our timestamp here and we're gonna turn that into a date column. So after we run this code here to create the date column, now we have a date column right here. And then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna set our date column to be the index of our data frame. So you can see here now our index is a date. So here's where we start our data analysis. We're gonna take our closing price data and we're gonna turn it into log returns. So we're just creating this column called log returns here. Next, we're gonna set this window period, which is gonna be our rolling standard deviation window. We're gonna set that to 20 trading days, so that's a month. And then we're gonna calculate the standard deviation of our log returns by using this dot rolling dot standard deviation. And you can see all the code here. And then lastly, we're gonna take our empty data frame from above, and then we're gonna add a new column, which the column title is gonna be the ticker name. And then we're gonna input our standard deviation data as the values of that column. And that's what this code does here. So we pulled the data down, we did the analysis, and then we're just taking our standard deviations and moving those into a separate data frame. So because all the codes in a for loop, it's going to do that for every single ticker that's inside of our stock ticker list. So now that we understand what's happening in the for loop, I'm just going to run all this code so we can take a look at this variable standard deviations data. And as you can see here, it returns all the data that we've requested, but we're getting some NAND values. So as you can see, we have NAND values that correspond to the length of our rolling standard deviation window here. So all we're going to do is we're going to trim our data set. So what we're doing here is we're just trimming our data set down. And as you can see now, after running that, there's no more NANDs. So if you watched my very first ASMR video, you could see that I fumbled the bag for about seven ASMR minutes, which in reality was like 25 minutes of trying to figure out how am I going to transpose this data? It's only two lines of code. <laughs> Wait, it took way too long to uh, figure out how to do that. So in short, since we're looking at volatility data, we really want to look at the most recent, oh fuck. 
So if you watch that video, I actually made an error, which I just caught here. So when I'm doing the transpose operation, we're actually getting the top row when we should be getting the bottom row, since obviously we wanna look at the most recent volatility data and we don't need to look at this first row, we need to look at this last row. So I'm gonna change this code right here. So to correct the mistake, what we have to do is turn this to a negative one and then we have to put the semicolon on the other side. Awesome, well, we all make mistakes, so hopefully those mistakes don't blow up your whole investment account. So now you can see we've got our most recent volatility data here. What we need to do now is sort it and kind of rename our columns and our index as well. So this next line of code here, we're just renaming our column to be standard devs. And then here, this next line of code, we're just gonna sort our values. And then lastly, we're gonna trim our data set so that we have the highest volatility instruments here in our new data frame called highest vol. You can see we have our tickers here as our index, and then we have our standard deviations as our column and values. Up next, easy work, we're just creating an empty string called message, and then this is where we're gonna create our message we're gonna use in our push notifications. So here in this for loop, we're gonna go through our highest vol data frame to create this message, but we're gonna be leaving out the last line of the data frame. So here we're just creating our message, we're just including in our message our value from a specific row of the data frame. So we're just including these and then we're just doing some format, but we're leaving out the last row. And then here we're just creating the final line of our message from our last row of the data frame. The only difference is we're not adding a new line so that we can have a concise message. When you look at our message here, we have our values from our data frame from each row and then we have our final row here and then there's no new line. And all we're gonna do is these last three lines here, we're gonna create a connection to the pushover app and then we're gonna create a post request to send our message. So here's how we're gonna make the post request. So here we have our token and we have our user and these are from our pushover app. If you watch the video, I go through how to get everything set up. And then we're giving a title to our message and then we're inputting our message as our message parameter. And then this code is just gonna send it off and then this just quickly gets a response. This is all from the documentation, very straightforward. So when we go ahead and run that, we can see it pushes our push notification with all of our volatility data to our phone. Bam, and just like that, now you can send volatility notifications to your phone using the Polygon API and the Pushover app API in Python. If you like the content, you can always buy me a coffee. Any questions, drop me a comment below, leave a like, and watch out for those red candles, spam. Let's go get these bags.